I guess we can make it a, a little bit of an analogy, is the hope that maybe what we're seeing with the Ottawa Senators right now and the fact that, look, their farm team last year, they had a bunch of guys uh, with Corey Clouston, specifically in the second half of the season once they moved out a couple bodies and, you know, they traded out Chris Kelly and they traded out Mike Fisher. They brought a bunch of guys up, then they sent them back down to, the, uh, to Binghamton, and a lot of those players ended up going on an extended run. I think they got about 23 games, and they won the Calder Cup championship. Um, and five or six of those players are now full-time members of the Ottawa Senators. Most of them are in bottom six roles. But do you think there's an analogy maybe for the likes of a PRV and a Lander and a Hardikainen to maybe some of the experience that some of the Ottawa guys uh, have had? And are the Oilers maybe trying to mirror that a bit? Well, I mean, that's been the plan all along is to, if we can develop them, we'd rather develop them there. You know, it, it's that's their education into, you know, what playoff hockey professional, what the American Hockey League really looks like. I mean, if you can perform there and be a solid performer, whether you're an offensive player or a defense player or a fighter or a goaltender, pretty much you're going to have a, a good chance to be a good NHL player too in time. Um, some of those players uh, will get a chance next year. There's also a group of them that I would say in the next couple of years. Like I'm watching, I'm watching Pitlick play our last hockey game, and to see the difference of what he looked at the beginning of the year to what he looks like now playing in a playoff game, powerful, uh, wants the puck, being able to have the strength to take it to the net, uh, playing the points on the power play, which I didn't expect, but he did and played well. Um, those are the kind of things you want to see. Those are the those are the arrows pointing up, you know, where you say, of course, these guys are going to get a chance. Edmonton Oilers General Manager Steve Tambellini joining us in studio here on 6.30. Chad Bob Stauffer, Oilers Now. Let me ask you, um, <clears throat> has anything changed in the last couple of weeks from where your headspace is at after watching the opening round of the playoffs and seeing the type of teams that have succeeded so far? Wow, it's been... Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm watching these games. We're in the Czech Republic, and there's nights, as you know, when you're... The time change in that, you can't sleep anyway, so you're flipping on the, the playoff games and watching them. And I think everybody was talking about uh, the intensity and the physicality. And some things, yes, were over the top. And then result of Brendan uh, suspending, you know, quite a few players. But the play was more on edge, I think, than what we'd seen in a long time. It'll be interesting to see what happens now, right. you know, going into the next series. Um Players don't feel the same after they finish one series. No one is healthy. That first series is a is a dangerous one to get through that. So I think it shows you that you can be a Detroit Red Wings that have had success, but you still need that team toughness, so to speak, to be able to handle the barrage of physical play when guys are, relatively speaking, still fresh. You still have to be able to handle that in the playoffs. Well, I guess the next question then is, Steve, you've got skill up front. Yeah. And I got I got front. You couldn't say much. I I can as a broadcaster. No I got, kidding. I got frustrated you in did. the final 35 games of the year because you can never get any power plays. You know, the first 47 games this year, I Jack Michaels passed this note along to me during the year. He said, first, 45, first 47 games, the Oilers had at least two power plays per game. And then there was a stretch of 20 games where nine of those 20 games you had one or fewer power play. And I think that... You know, that has been extended for other teams around the league as well. Does knowing that and knowing what you saw in the first round of the playoffs, does make you maybe change? We need to add those type of players here to, to, to come along with our core. You know, we need to draft those players and potentially look at signing players like that as free agents as well. Well, that's a big question that you're asking from yeah. a lot of different areas. You know, there's been so much attention brought forward to the public over the last few weeks here with the first round. And I think I, I'm looking forward to the, the spring managers' meetings just to get the overview of really how everybody feels and how and how uh, the league feels from their standpoint of, of of analyzing really what went on that first round. Now there'll be some that say let's let's see what happens in the final rounds here. Let's maybe there does need to be some adjustments with regards to the level of standard of play with regards to hooking and and the type of uh, aggressive, um, out-of-control hits that, you know, were close to heads at times. And, you know, there just seemed to be a lot of that rambunctious play that you didn't see uh, a lot of, uh, or more, uh, that much of, as what you saw in the playoffs. So that'll be a good discussion. I think, you know, we've talked about it, Bob, that we need that heaviness uh, to play along with their skill. And it can't be just 
it's not just heavy, uh, tough players. It's players that have to be able to play with right. a Nugent Hopkins and play with uh, a, a PRV or Hall or Everlay. So you're not just talking about, um, you know, an aggressive player. You know, you need to be able to draft and hopefully your players such as Pitlick that are coming along, that are heavy, that can play through the, the type of traffic that we're seeing right now. So we understand that. Uh, we've had good discussions over the last two years with Stu McGregor and his staff about the type of player that we need to complement, some elite skill that we have in the organization. But as you know, most of those young players uh, are not available uh, through trade or through free agency. Uh, those are players that you have to pretty much bring up through your organization. We're joined by Edmonton Oilers general manager Steve Cantley. <laughs> Steve, we'd be remiss. I mean, at the end of uh, you know during your availability, you mentioned the fact that we're still kind of in a holding pattern on the coaching front, and also in, in terms of there's nothing to announce with either you or the coaches right now. I mean, I've got to ask you that question right now. No, that's not a problem. I, I'm, I'm totally comfortable. I've spoke to that in the yeah. past at the our year in press conference, and Tom and I will get together. Um, we're just trying to, one, make sure everybody has some time uh, to get out of the emotional state of, of season, and sometimes that takes a little bit. Uh, and I'm traveling uh, to our, our amateur meetings, which are huge meetings coming up here in the next couple of days. I intend to meet Kevin uh, overseas at the World Championships and s stay with him for some time to watch some of our players playing, so I'm looking forward to that. And I'll be back. Uh, so there's lots to take care of. We've got a lot of of hockey operation contracts, coaches, uh, scouts, a lot of things that we have to take uh, take in, in order, but we'll get it done. All right, well, when we come back here in Oilers now, we'll get to some specifics. We'll talk about some of the players and uh, maybe some of the thought processes about drafting as well. This is Oilers Now, 630 Jet, Edmonton Sports Leader.